is George Washington, an extraordinary man, but only because he stood up not only to Great Britain, but early on to himself and made sure that he was a man of virtue and merit. George Washington, in the end of his life, said his biggest fear would be that at some point in his life, at the end, he would do something that would eternally dishonor him. At eight years old, he's writing, he's writing a list of things to do. Always do these things. Never do these things. If you read them and try to apply them to yourself, I'm reading them now and I'm trying to apply them and they're impossible. I mean, I got the no spitting in the fire thing down, but some of them are impossible. One of them is never cross your legs. When you're seated, seat, seat yourself upright and never cross your legs. Leave your hands folded in your lap. Try that for a day. He did it his whole life. At one point, I made it till about, I don't know, 12, 15. And at one point, I'm having a meeting and I said, I just have to cross my legs. And my staff, who I hadn't told what I'm doing, they said, what are you talking about? I said, I've been trying all day just not cross my legs. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do some of the things that George Washington did. That's insane. They said to me, you know what? When we walked in, you felt different. I'm like, yeah, I was in pain. That's what it was. <laughs> he demanded the highest standard of himself first. And he sucked as a general. He did. For a long time, he stunk on ice. 1776, they declare their independence. Well, now we have to have an army because they're coming. And so we start to fight and we appoint George Washington to be the general and he sucks. He loses every single time. We get to New York, which isn't really far from where everything kind of started. We keep losing and losing and losing. Can't lose New York. Now I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no. No, no, that was wrong. That's, that's, that's a joke George Washington wouldn't have told. But you didn't come to listen to George Washington now, did you? Can't lose New York. So he says, we need a spy. Now, nobody wanted to be a spy because in the days, if you were a spy, you were hung. Hung like a dog. So he gets together and he says, we need spies. They all say, no. I'm not going to spy. They'll hang you. I'm not going to be hung. I'll die in battle, but I'm not going to be hung. Nobody does it except one ordinary man. He was a school teacher. And that gave him the perfect reason to go across the water and go to Long Island because he was a teacher. So he could bring school books. I'm just going to talk to my students. He would spy and see how many men the British had, what the fort looked like, what was going on. He decided to do it, even though he was the captain, and his own unit refused. They tried to talk him out of it. In fact, he had to talk his own unit into staying together the year before. They, were all, they weren't getting paid. Congress was, well, like Congress is now. And they weren't paying. And so all of his troops in the unit said, we're leaving. He said, no, 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 listen. This is the right thing. This is the right thing to do. Stay. He not only convinced them to stay um, and fought that battle, he actually paid them with his own salary. He took his pay and divided it up against the, among the men. So when no one volunteered, he stood up and he said, I'll do it. I'll spy. They turned to him and said, you can't do that. They'll hang you. You can't die like that. That's dishonorable. He said, if I may quote, I think I owe to my country the accomplishments of an object so important and so much desired by the commander of her armies, and I know no other mode of obtaining the information. I am fully sensible of the consequences of discovery and capture in that situation. But for a year now, 
I have been attached to the army and I have not rendered any material service while receiving compensation. Remember, he gave his money to everybody else. But he's saying, I was paid and I haven't done anything. And George Washington is asking in the name of our country. I am not yet influenced by the expectation of promotion. I don't expect any monetary reward. I just want to be useful. And every kind of service necessary for the public good becomes honorable by being necessary. He went on September 18th. He crossed in a boat. He was there for two days. He was waiting for the boat to return to pick him up when the British soldiers surrounded him, questioned him, searched him. In his shoes, written in Latin, were all the specks of the fort and everything else that he had spied. They questioned him some more. He wouldn't give them any information. Then they said to him, we will give you money. We will pay you. We will let you go. All you have to do is go back across, get this piece of information for us, and come back. Now think of this. Maybe this guy's the dumbest guy in the world, but I would have said, oh, I'll be right back, guys. He didn't. He was honorable. He said, I will not spy on my fellow countrymen. So they took him, they tried him, they hung him, and we only know really the part of the story that ends, I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country. Nathan Hale was his name.